Good evening. Here in Nairobi, it's evening. We welcome everyone to this service. Before we start, we are going to have a few songs. And just as we are getting into this session of worship in music, let's humble ourselves for a word of prayer. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the gift of this beautiful day we have had. We thank you for the gift of sunshine. For the family life week we have, we thank you. We thank you for all the teachings. As we continue learning from you, kindly bless us. Remember, Pastor, give him words of wisdom to give unto us that what we do glorifies your name in everything that we'll do. Help us for the rest of the week until the week ends in a way that you know best. For we ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. So we are in Nairobi, Nairobi, Kenya, and our official language is, one of our languages is Kiswahili. So we'll start off with a song in Kiswahili from our Nyimbo za Christo. We call it Nyimbo za Christo. It is Nyimbo za Christo, Wimbo Nambari Tatu, that is Mungu Atukuzwe, To God Be the Glory, 341 in the SDA hymnal. So my name is Beatrice Okongo. I am serving today with uh, my, the pianist is Florence Opio. We'll start off the singing. Thank you very much. Mungu atukuzwe kwa mambo maku upendo in English. Thing. 
Amen. We'll now move on to SDA hymnal, song number 608, Faith of Our Fathers. 608, Faith of Our Fathers. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. We'll move on to song number 15, still from our SDA hymnal, My Maker and My King. 15, 1, 5. My maker and my king to thee, my all I owe. Thy sovereign bounty is the spring whence all my blessings flow. Thy sovereign bounty is the spring whence all my blessings flow. The creature of 
thank you. Thank you so much, sister, for that beautiful singing. We want to invite everybody today for this Family Life Week of Prayer. We want to invite the church present and the church online. We want to thank God for his servant, Pastor Robert, who has been taking us through these very, very enriching uh, teachings on family life. And we thank God. We want to welcome you and invite you, and we hope that you are going to be blessed as you listen to the man of God. As Nairobi Central Church, we want to say feel most welcome, those who are watching us at home and those who are presently here in church. This evening, before we begin our service, I would just want to commit you to the Lord in prayer and commit everybody else and our speaker who will be speaking to us in a short while. Let's close our eyes for a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much. We thank you for giving us this evening that we can listen to you speak to us. We thank you for our families, our children, our daddies, and our mommies, oh Lord. There are so many challenges in our families, Lord, which you are the only one who can deal with. But those, Lord, which can be addressed by these lessons, Lord, I pray that you may impress on us to listen to the words and the teachings of your servant that we can change and make our families a better place to be in and happy homes and full of blessings. Be with us even as we begin this meeting. Touch your servant. Use him once again today the way you've used him before. For this I pray, believing and trusting in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. I also want to say that my other two colleagues, Pastor Nyaga and Pastor Nyamach, are also present online. Uh, they have been engaged in visitations, but they are, they are watching us, and they, have, uh, they, are, they are greeting all of you who are present to listen to these teachings. May the Lord bless you as you prepare to listen to the servant of the Lord. Thank you so much. Good evening, church. Our scripture reading today comes from the book of Philippians, chapter 3, verse 13 and 14. And it reads, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press forward towards the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I will repeat, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press forward, I press toward the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. May the Lord bless his reading. This is our, we are going on our prayer session and would request each and every one of us, those who are viewing virtually in the Facebook, YouTube, or wherever you are, just reverend yourself wherever you are for a word of prayer. The ones in the congregation, I would request you to stand up for a word of prayer before we start our session. Holy, 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 our dear heavenly gracious Father, we come before thy throne of mercy this evening, Jehovah God, to praise thee, adore thee, and glorify thy name. You are our heavenly Father, you are our King, you are our Judge, you are our Lord, you are our Lawgiver, and you are our Redeemer. There is no God under the sun we can bow to except thee, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Holy Father, honor and glory be to thee. We praise thee and adore thee because you are a wonderful savior. This particular moment, Jehovah God, we come to thee with all our burdens. We have burdens of various challenges, Jehovah God, but we have to turn to thee because you are the only one who can help us to carry our burdens. We have burdens of various challenges. We have burdens of financial problems. We have burdens of health issues. We have burdens of marital constraints. Holy Father, send thy Holy Spirit to guide us. 
Your yoke is easy and your burden is light. Help us to carry our burdens. At this particular moment, Jehovah God, we have many of your children lying in hostile beds. Lord, extend thy tender healing hands to them. You are the mighty healer of both spiritual and physical maladies. Take charge, Jehovah God, and help them. And many have lost their loved ones, Jehovah God. May you comfort them in a special way. Provide for them the resources which they can use to go and lay to rest the remains of their loved ones. Holy Father, this particular week we have been worshipping thee, Jehovah God, to revive our faith, faith in family set up, Jehovah God. That is, this is the institution where we know the devil is targeting. But Holy Father, we know we are worshipping a God who has authority over all everything. You have authority over thy children in whatever we are doing. Help us so that we can have stable family because we know without families, there is no church, there is no nation, there is no nothing that can go on in the world. Thank you, Jehovah God. Thy servant whom you have anointed, Holy Father, who has come all the way, Jehovah God, to come and break the bread of life for us the whole of this week, Jehovah God, use him mightily, Jehovah God, help his family so that he can continue with the service you have given him to render to us. Let him use you, Holy Father, to use his lips. Let him be an agent so that whatever he disseminates to us can revive us and reform us. We commit to thee all our needs for today. We invite thy Holy Spirit to be amidst us as we are starting this program, Jehovah God. And let the Holy Spirit not depart from us from the beginning up to the end. All this we ask, trusting and believing in the holy name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. We'll uh, also continue with the program. And we are moving to the session of uh, worshiping the Lord in uh, tithes and offerings to support this particular session of uh, family life. Uh, I hope we have the deacons around. Okay. Uh, I'll read a uh, text before I can invite whoever the deacons who are around so that we can do the lifting up. Those who are on the uh, media, all our details for paying the tithes and offering are indicated on the media. So please use it to send whatever offering you would like to give. Uh, Malachi 10, 3 says, bring all the tithe into the house, into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out, you, 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 uh, pour out for you such blessings that there will be no room enough to receive them. May we pray. Jehovah God, this is the time for us, Lord, to give to thee, Lord, so that thy service continue, Jehovah God. Bless those who have something to give this day and even those who will give thereafter. Almighty Father, you are the provider, and so that thy work can continue. At this particular moment, Jehovah God, we are seeking thee to be amidst us as we are praying, uh, asking for collection of whatever you have blessed us with, so that thy work can continue. All this we ask, trusting and fill in men, holy name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Praise God once so again. So the deacons, please be upstanding and collect from the congregation. Thank you. Praise God once again. We are going to, as we do the collection, we will do our opening song. That is song number 652 from our SDA hymnal, Love at Home. Let's all join in the singing in whatever language that is. Smiling fair on every side. Time 
Thank you very much for the beautiful music, Love at Home, Love at Home. That is what you and I need, that there will be love, that there will be peace, there will be harmony in our homes, and that is why the church has seen the need for us to have Family Life Week, where we have dedicated a whole week looking at family and how best we can help our families nature, our families to grow in God's grace. We are talking about family resilience. We know there are so many challenges going on in our homes, trials, tribulations here and there, conflicts, disagreements, sometimes fighting, all sort of things going on in our homes. But assurance we have is that we can bounce back through God's grace. Resilience means Whatever is going on, whatever has happened in the past, we will rebound so that we can move on in good strength to the glory of God. You are welcome once again to these presentations this evening. Those of us here, we want to welcome you. Those of us who are also joining us online, we want to thank you for making time to be with us wherever you are. Yesterday, we look at wives and Husband, what? Relationship. How is the relationship supposed to be? We talk about the need. The Bible says wives should honor and respect their husband. It's also supposed to love the wife. And your wife should be your priority. Tonight we are dedicating it to the singles in our midst. We have so many people who are single parents, single parents especially, not just the single, we talk about them on Sunday. But today we are talking about assisting single parents in building resilience. Do we have single parents in our church, in our churches, in our homes? What are we doing to help them? That is what we are going to look at tonight. The Bible says, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. But one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press towards the goal for the price of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. Gracious Father. As we open your word, as we study, we pray through the power of your spirit. Speak through us. Bless us. Bless our understanding. 
that by your grace we'll be able to appreciate your word. Speak through me, through the power of your spirit, in Jesus' name, amen. When you hear the term, single parent, what images flood your mind? I just would like you to pause and describe exactly what is in your mind's eye. Perhaps our attempts towards judging present a picture that is far from accurate. Did you imagine a person of courage and resourcefulness? What about a person who exhibited resilience. We have talked about resilience, and we say resilience is defined as the process of adopting well in the face of adversity, trauma, tragedy, threats, or significant sources of what? Stress, such as family and relationship problems, serious health problems, or workplace and financial stresses. As much as resilience involves bouncing back from these difficult experiences, it can also involve profound personal growth. Resilience, bouncing back. Our scripture for this evening reminds us of the importance of forgetting what is behind. I'm pressing on. You know, the ability to press on regardless of the past is resilience in action. Resilience in action is when we are able to press on, having the ability to press on regardless of my past, regardless of your past, knowing that God is able to bring transformation in our life. You know, there is little doubt that most single parents may be in a situation that has demand, you know, demanded forgetting the past and pressing on. A situation that would encourage, encourage them to forget about the past so that they can press on, so that they can bounce back because of maybe the situation they have gone through. As a church, how may we be part of assisting single parents in the process of building resilience? How are we helping single parents so that they can bounce back? Perhaps you have heard rude or judgmental comments from others, even church members, toward or about single parents. Some people are prone to make assumptions about the life of other people, even their financial status or even their character without ever knowing the actual story. But the moment we see somebody, the moment we have that tag, single parent, some people begin to imagine things, to think about how the person ended up. But this may seem unfair. We cannot allow someone else's uninformed opinion and misguided judgment to define who we are or how we feel. As a church, we can educate our members to be receptive to single parents, to love them, to cherish them, to make them feel comfortable, to let them know that they have support group people around them who are interested in them, who are ready to support them, whom they can count on. Is that what the church is doing for our single parent? But you know, there are different routes to single parenthood. So sometimes, the moment you hear that this person is a single parent, don't just judge. There are multiple different routes that takes one into single parenthood. For some, single parenting is a path, a path they purposefully chose. 
They have decided to be single parents. They chose that. Somebody says, I just need a child. That's all. Others may have had difficult journeys, strain with heartbreak, abuse, loss, or grief. Their experience in marriage wasn't the best. Some are parenting alone because their spouse or their spouse has died suddenly. Some were cheated on. Others were abandoned. Still others are parenting alone because they have fled a domestic violence situation or a partner with addiction. The point I'm making is that every situation is unique. So don't put all single parents in one category. And the reason that led to someone becoming a single parent vary from one person to the other. But as a church, we need to think about them. We need to support. You know, some admit they do not tell someone they meet for the first time that they are single parent because they are afraid of being labeled or judged. There may be also when they say that they are single parents, they may receive critical remarks, sometimes even from their relatives, colleagues, acquaintances, and church members. Remarks may not be the best. Critical remarks just because the person is a single parent. Others say they have been dropped from their social circles. Or they are no longer invited even when their families are meeting because they are single parents. Let's repeat what we said earlier. God does not give one's neighbor, friends, family, or even the church members the role of judge, judging us for who we are and for what we are going through. We need to set boundaries. Believers, single parents deal with so much and the last thing on their to-do list should be dealing with the misplaced judgment of others. Misplaced judgment of others. Sometimes we just judge. We just look at them. We just describe them. We just have a picture in our mind which may not be true. Yes, it is hard to listen to heartful words. And at some point, single parents may even stop being shocked by the rude things people say and how some people treat them differently. We need to learn to set boundaries. Appropriate boundaries should be set by single parents so that when people want to intrude on their privacy, they can excuse themselves. They can set boundaries. I want us to, first of all, look at seven tips that we need to share with single parents to help them put boundaries in place so that people cannot take them for granted. But the first boundary we can set is stop the negative self-talk. Stop the negative self-talk. Do not let the criticism of others affect how you talk about yourself. Sometimes because of the criticism, because of the comments, because of what we hear from the people we come in contact with, we are also prone to say negative things about ourselves. But I want to say that you can stick some positive affirmations on your bathroom in a mirror and read them at the start of each day. Memorize them and repeat them to yourself if those negative thoughts begin to creep in. When you start entertaining negative thoughts, there are some positive words, Bible passages, Messages of hope that you and I can memorize, can read to energize us, to give us the courage to move forward so that we will stop the negative self-talk. Looking down upon ourselves, that is not right. 
and does not apply to only single parents. It applies to all of us who are prone to have negative talk. Number two, focus on good friends. We may have good friends. Think about those true friends of yours that you have around. You know, you need not surround yourself with so-called friends who continue to fill your ears with negative talk. Focus on the good friends. Those who are encouraging you, those who are supporting you, those who are urging you on, those who are helping you in your Christian life, in the training of your children. Focus on those ones. Don't focus on those who, who are always ready to criticize you. Think about those true friends of yours. They are the people you can focus on. Number three, focus on what you got right for today. You know, sometimes when we go out or when we wake up, we have a lot of to-do lists. So many things we want to do. And then at the end of the day, we check to see whether we were able to accomplish them or not. And sometimes we get so discouraged because we could not accomplish them. Think about the successes in your day, in your life. Recount them each night before you go to bed and thank God for each victory. That is what we need to do. Focus on the good things in your life. Every evening before I sleep, before I pray, I look at my activity for the day and those I can be thankful to God for and those that are positive, those that can urge me on because we are living in a sinful world. We are living in a world where every day people discourage us even for the good things that we do. Sometimes we do not think evil. We know we are doing the right thing but at the end of the day, people may say certain things that may discourage us. Focus on the positive. Don't focus on the negative. Number four, honestly express your thoughts. What are your thoughts? Do yourself a favor and clear out all your frustration. The frustration in your heart and in your mind. Clear them. Do yourself that favor. Talk to one of those good friends. And sometimes even you can keep a journal or you can block about whatever you are doing. If you need to go to a counselor, you can also go. We will talk about that. Again, let go of all the negative thoughts and feelings. Clean them out and try to replace them with positive practices that refuse to let them come back. Number five. Be self-aware. Be self-aware. If you are experiencing negativity, stop and think about what is causing that feeling. Are you experiencing negative thoughts? Are you experiencing thoughts that are not right? That are not encouraging? Thoughts that are not enabling you to be able to do whatever you have to do? Is it bad, friends? If so, you need to stop hanging around them. Are you watching too much media that continues to portray negative images? If so, you need to turn off your television. Be self-aware. Are you spending too much time sitting around and engaging in negative self-talk? If so, it may be time to get up and use the energy for more positive things than the self-destructive motives. In other words, try to identify the things that are leading to your negative feelings and emotions and replace them with more positive activities in your life. Single parents, we are talking about you. Number six, go out to nature. Go outside. You know, negative talk from others or yourself will eventually bring you down. Are you aware of that? Whether other people are telling you negative stuff or whether you are also thinking negative about yourself can bring you down. Hit the re reset button by going into nature. Go out into fresh air. 
Breathe deeply. Walk. Talk with the creator God. And you will feel the anxiety begin to melt away. Exercising in the fresh air is one of the best things you can do to begin to look at things in a new way. Number seven, you should develop boundaries. Walk away and speak up. Don't be intimidated. You can choose who to spend time with, who you are going to listen to, and what subjects you will allow your conversation with other people to cover. You can say no, and you can walk away. If someone says something out of the line about your family or your circumstances, tell the person to stop. Don't wait and just let them tell you things that will bring discouragement to you. Sometimes a person needs to be confronted in order to stop their rude comments. You know, believers, healing years of emotional pain, emotional torture, does not just happen overnight. We all want immediate results, but please understand that this process is a journey. It is a journey. There may also be barriers that prevent someone from getting professional help. So we need to understand that things may not be as we expect. Yes, you may be going through challenges. You may be going through difficulties. But we need to still find time to talk. There are times when talking to a trusted friend or a minister, a pastor, may be exactly what is needed. Sometimes you need to talk. You need to call people you can confide in, people you can discuss your situation, your frustrations with. Go that step. Don't keep things to yourself. There are other times when even talking to a family member may not be in your best interest, and they may need more intensive, objective, and professional help. If that is the case, you need to try. What are some of the signs that indicate a need for outside professional help? If you are going through trauma, if you are going through difficulties, if you are going through challenges, what are some of the signs that will indicate to you that, yes, it is time for you to look for professional help, to look for somebody to be of help, to come in to support you. Number one, if you cannot remember the last time you had a good night's sleep, not only singles, all of us, sometimes perpetually, continuously, you cannot sleep well. You know, the constant cycle of a lack of sleep is a clear sign that things are not working and you need outside intervention. If you are going through any situation as a family, individually, single parents, that is keeping you awake throughout the night, for a long time, you need to look for outside intervention. It has gotten to a point you cannot solve it alone. Your health will soon deteriorate and this will make things even worse. And so, you need to remember, if you cannot sleep, number two, your network is not working. Sometimes, you may have people around you, your so-called network, your friends, People very close to you, you talk to them, family members. And still, as you talk to friends, as you talk to family members, you know, it leaves you feeling more discouraged. Instead of overcoming the challenge, you are more discouraged. Perhaps those people are too close to you. And they know so much about your situation. And so they are not able to be objective. Therefore, you may need to have external assistance to help you Move forward. Somebody who is neutral to come in to help you. Check and see if your network is not working. Then you need to look for people outside your network to help you. Number three, if, for instance, there was or there is physical or emotional abuse, whilst becoming a single parent, 
Did you go through abuse? Were you abused physically or emotionally? And always you are remembering what you have gone through. There is no way you allow this behavior to continue without getting help and finding safety immediately. Physical, emotional, and verbal abuse should never be tolerated. It is not how God would want his daughter or son to be treated. So if you had gone through abuse, you need help. Even if it is not occurring right now in the present, and but it happens in the past, you may need professional help to overcome the effects of past abuse. It can also be helpful for your child if he or she has also experienced the same. Number four, you are afraid to say certain things in your family. When you are afraid to talk openly, you don't feel comfortable talking in your family. It may be that you need assistance. When you do not feel comfortable sharing your feelings and thoughts without being demeaned, criticized, judged, or bullied, something is terribly wrong. You need a safe place to talk. That is when you need to look for somebody from outside to help you. Number five, you deny, excuse, or choose to ignore the signs of problems such as drug or alcohol abuse. Sometimes as a result of what we are going through, we resort to drug abuse. Substance abuse is an indication of greater problems than simple emotional stress or fatigue. Sometimes we tell ourselves, oh, I can stop anytime. I am not addicted. I will stop as soon as my, my, my parenting situation stabilizes. This is the height of denial. And it is a, a key indicator that outside help is needed. We may say, oh, we are Seventh-day Adventists. We do not do drugs. We may not abuse anything. Who knows? Sometimes the situation others are going through may drive them to abuse themselves and to get involved in certain things that are not right. Before you know, you become addicted. Number six, you have a reoccurring thought that your child will be better off without you. When you start thinking as a single parent or even as a parent that your child will be better off without you. These are negative thoughts. And they are the result of a deeper problem that needs professional help. All of us, occasionally, we have that occasional thoughts that perhaps we are not the best parents. However, when it becomes a daily obsession, this is a key indicator that one needs professional intervention. When always as a parent, you think you are not doing right, you are not doing your work well. If a person needs, for instance, somebody illustrated it this way. You say, if a person needs eyeglasses, would they break the bottom out of two glass bottles, get out some wire and make their own eyeglasses? They don't do that, right? Those who are wearing glasses don't do that. Or would one perform a root canal on their own mola with a new power drill? Nobody would do that. Would you take out your own appendix? Of course not. So if we would not do that, why is it that we are reluctant to ask professional help when we need it? Sometimes we are afraid of the stigma. But as church, we need to help break down these barriers. We need to break down the stigmatization of people in our midst. We need to educate our members to know how we can deal with one another, how we can help each other's experience, rather than dumping their spirit, rather than demoralizing them, rather than doing things 
That can affect them. Why do you think single parents most often talk to when they need a listening ear or advice? Whom do they talk to? Can they talk to us as a church? I want to say that all parents have felt inadequate at times regarding our own situation. All parents have yelled, have said the wrong thing, and wished for a do-over. Or we have lost our patience before. And every time the guilt comes crashing down, we are tempted to think that because of our perceived deficiencies, we will ruin our child forever. But I want to say, having these feelings is not or are not unique to single parents. It is far too easy to think that someone else would do a better job parenting your children than you yourself. But here is the beautiful part. I want us to know that no parent is perfect. We all have flaws. But when we know our weaknesses, we should work on them. We all have good days. And we have our not so good days. There will always be days when we wish we could rewind the clock and have a do-over. Living in a culture driven by constant connectivity and social media does nothing to help the situation when we are going through challenges. All we need to do is to scroll through maybe Facebook, Instagram, whatever, social media, and then we are reminded of how perfect all other parents are and the fact that we are not good. In fact, there are the ones whose kids always look picture perfect when you look at their social media. There are some whose kids, the hair and makeup are daily done to perfection. You see their pictures. There are some parents whose homes are spotless who make delicious homemade meals and do craft projects with their kids each afternoon. But I want you to know that, have this in mind, that things are not always as they appear. Things are not always as they appear. Sometimes, yes, you may see on social media so many things going on perfectly with other people. And then you start blaming yourself. You start thinking that, oh, I am not good. I am not able to do well. I have not been able to make it. Take your time. Don't rush. Things that look perfect on social media are not always perfect in reality. No one is the perfect parent except God. The father. All of us as parents, we have our flaws. Single parents, we need to understand this. Understanding that God owes a divine tax. God has called you and God has entrusted something in your hands, especially taking care of your children. You may be a single parent. You may be male or female. Whatever your situation I want you to know God cares. God has a purpose. God has entrusted the children in your hands for a purpose. And somebody wrote a letter that he says we can imagine God writing this letter to single parents. And I want to read it to our single parents to encourage you, to strengthen you. God writing to you a letter to a single mom or single dad. My beloved single parent, you are chosen, you are enough, and you are mine. My love for you is fierce. I am proud of you. I see your heart, the way you seek me, and your devotion to raising your child. Well done, my child. My child, you are a delight to me. 
I chose you at the foundation of the world, and I have sanctified you for a great purpose. Beloved, I stand ready to join you on your parenting journey. The path may be blurry before you, but it is my sight. And I can see the finish line. I will carry you when you are weak, give you strength, and you will not fall. Beloved child, you are enough. I have chosen you to parent your child. You belong to me, and I called you worthy. My promise is to give you hope and a future. Do not waste the blessings of time by worrying about tomorrow, for I have already taken care of all your needs. With my limitless and everlasting love, I will meet the needs of your child also. They will lack nothing. I am sufficient. Their identity is in me. Their provision is me. Their future is in me. I have set them apart for a great purpose. I have tremendous plans for the future of your child. Watching you raise them delights me. I have chosen you to raise this child. You are the warrior fit to shepherd them, instruct them, direct them, prepare them, train them, and prepare them to face the world. No weapon formed against you will prosper, for they all belong to me. My darling single parent, do not forget that you are a treasure to me. You are of inestimable value. And I will never stop loving you. My beloved, you are mine forever. Your heavenly father. Just think about it. This is God's prayer, God's desire, God's wish for single parents. The truth is that sooner or later, all families may face trauma, adversity, and other stresses. The good news is that God offers a roadmap for adapting to life-changing situations, pressing on, emerging even stronger than before. That is resilience defined. So, what can you do as a church, as individuals, as family members, as colleagues? What can we do to support single parents in our midst. We need to educate ourselves to know that we need to demonstrate and show love, compassion without being judgmental. What an amazing grace. What amazing love Jesus has for each of us, regardless of our backgrounds. In God's sight, single parents are precious honored, and loved beyond measure. He treasures and loves each with a love that has no limit. In addition, we must have a compilation of existing resources in our community that we can give or direct single parents to. Every community is unique. Every country is unique. Above all, let us model the amazing grace and love of Jesus. It will be contagious as others see him reflected in your action, in my action. Single parents are raising the next generation and we need to be there to walk beside them so they, along with their children, will be in heaven. That is God's desire for us. That is what God wants you and I to do. Yes, there are single parents in our midst. What are we doing for them? Single parents, be cheerful. Know that God is on your side. He will not leave you. He is by your side. He will strengthen you. He will guide you and it shall be well with you. Commit your ways to the Lord. Allow him to lead you every day, every hour. Be positive, and it shall be well. In Jesus' name, amen.
gracious and eternal Father. Tonight we want to thank you for your grace, for your mercies, for your care over us. Thank you for our single parents. Thank you for the assurance you have given us that you are with them and therefore they need not be afraid. We pray for all single parents who are listening to us. If they are discouraged, we pray that you will strengthen them. If they are struggling, we pray that you be by their side. If they need help, please, we pray that you will provide or lead them to the right people who can be of service, who can bring joy to their hearts so that they can train the children entrusted in their hands in the fear of the Lord. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. Bless us tonight. Continue to guide us. Continue to help us in all that we do, that your holy name will be honored and exalted and magnified in our lives. For Christ's sake. Amen. Thank you for coming. God willing. Tomorrow, we will be looking at another important topic. Becoming one flesh. What does it mean? When the Bible says, husband and wife, become one flesh. Come, join us, and let's study further. God bless you, and thank you very much. Thank you, Pastor. To crown that, we are going to make use of hymn number 655 from our SDA hymnal, Happy the Home. We are going through sessional prayer. For those who are online, please send your prayer request and they will be responded to. The people in the congregation keep on sending your requests in the boxes which are in front of us every day and we all 
be attending to them. So let's have a word of prayer. Holy Father, the creator of the universe, we come to thee from time to time, sinful as we are and heavily laden as we are. Holy Father, we know we are coming to our Father who can relieve us from our burdens. Jehovah God, thy children are overburdened with various challenges, Jehovah God. We are not clean before thee, Jehovah God. Cleanse us from our sins, Jehovah God. Cleanse us from the sins of anger. Cleanse us from the sins of lust. Cleanse us from the sins of covetousness so that we can be able, Lord, to walk the life that can lead us to eternity. Your children have submitted their prayer requests, Jehovah God. You know them individually and collectively. Jehovah God, you know even the silent prayers because to thee nothing is silent. But we are thy children. We are stretching our hands into thine holy father. Touch us. Hold our hands and walk with us. Jehovah God, answer our prayers. We are not worthy calling thy name, but you are our heavenly father. You are worthy of praise and worthy of worship. Jehovah God, attend to us because you are the only one we can turn to when we are faced with bad news. Holy Father, bring us to good perspective whenever we cry to thee, Holy Father. Jehovah God, we seek thee that whatever has been in these boxes, attend to them, Jehovah God. You are the one who can answer them because we know we are worshiping the Lord who has authority over sin, has authority over death, has authority over many other challenges that we have in this world. But it is our prayer, Lord, that you lead us to that narrow way that can lead us to eternity so that we get out of this world. Be with us now, Jehovah God, and continue to lead this program so that we can be revived and reformed by the time thy servant leaves this place, Jehovah God, let's have a change in our lives and in our lifestyles, Jehovah God. Thank you even for the prayers which have been answered and many which are still flowing to come to thee, Jehovah God. We commit them into thy own hands. Lead us, guide us, protect us, Jehovah God, against harm and danger. Holy Father, cover us under the shadow of thy wings, Jehovah God so that we can be able to walk with thee in every direction. Be with us now, Jehovah God, and forevermore, all we commit to thee, trusting and believing in the holy name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. We have come to the end of the session. We are still going on with the family life service, as has been explained to you by the pastor. Keep coming, keep tuning in, and let's all be able to reap this which has been brought to us, Jehovah God, by Jehovah God. Therefore, we are inviting you to keep on coming, those who can come physically, those who can tune through YouTube, Facebook, and any other media that you can use. At the moment, we also ask you that if you have any prayer requests, don't hesitate. Send them. Many more can come and they will be answered. At the moment, I would request those who are in the congregation to stand so that we can recite a word of uh, grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ of our fellowship be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.